Let's take a moment to think about impressions. Every day, whether face-to-face -face or through virtual space, if you're communicating with someone, you're leaving behind some sort of impression. This was due yesterday. Greetings. My name is Professor Seibert from Mercy College. We're going to be talking about netiquette in this video. But before we do, take a moment to think about the impression that that student just left behind. If your answer is less than positive, you're probably right. Now, think about a better way that the student could have approached the professor with the assignment. Hello, professor. I know you have a lot of students. My name is Denosa Garcia. I'm from your Thursday speech class. Yeah, hi, Denosa. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm just wondering if you could please accept my assignment. I know it was due yesterday, but I was absent because I was having some difficulties, so I couldn't come to school. But I also emailed you explaining the situation. Great. Thank you. Much better, right? In this situation, the professor is much more likely to listen and consider accepting the assignment. Face-to-face -face communication is not always easy. Sometimes people's intentions, as harmless as they may be, may not translate well. This potential for miscommunication is even greater in the online world. So when a professor gets an email like this, just an attachment, no clear identifier of who the student is, what the assignment is, that may translate in the professor's mind to this. Which brings us to the topic of this video, netiquette. Think about that word, netiquette. Which two words combine to make that term? And what does the word mean to you? Netiquette is a blend of internet and etiquette. The internet is a collection of web pages, email, chats, instant messaging, message boards, social networks, blogs, listservs, and news groups. Combine this with etiquette. These are our standards of social conduct and behavior. They can vary from culture to culture, but some common ones are, don't chew with your mouth open, don't talk loudly on your cell phone around other people, and don't let the door slam on somebody's face. So what is netiquette? According to Merriam-Webster, netiquette is a set of rules about the proper and polite way to communicate with other people when you are using the internet. When you use the internet, whether it's for research or communicating through discussions, email, chats, there are rules that you need to follow. Understanding the needs of your audience can contribute to building positive relationships, especially in an academic environment. Let's review some of the general rules of netiquette. In general, it's good to keep messages concise using proper grammar and spelling. For instance, your attention might deviate from this message if I decide to convey this message to you in an excessively long-winded way upon which it is difficult for you to focus and keep track of the point. Know what I mean? Also, whether it is fair or not, people may judge others based on their grammar. Certain assumptions might be made about the person's intelligence, efforts, respect, or conscientiousness. To learn more about how to use concise language and correct grammar mistakes, check out the online writing lab at Purdue's website. Be careful when using sarcasm and humor, as it might be misinterpreted. Did she just call me and uh. be polite? Avoid using offensive language. Hi, classmates. This group project is a lot of work. If any of you is lack of, I'll have a nice day. People post insults to incite a reaction. Don't fuel the fire. Avoid flame wars. Avoid sending spam, which is the internet's version of junk mail. Spam is an unsolicited email message or posts sent to many recipients at once. Forwarding jokes and political commentary to friends and family is spam. 
Spam is an endless repetition of worthless text that nobody ever wants or asks for. Here is another rule. Hi, Professor. Here's my homework. I'm sorry, it was late. Avoid using all capital letters in your emails and posts. Never use all capital letters unless you intend to emphasize a particular word or phrase. Let's talk about emoticons. Sometimes to help someone interpret the tone of your email or post, you might add an emoticon. If you think the tone of your communication is unclear, consider rewriting it. Some professors may not mind friendly emoticons, but remember that they can be misconstrued or interpreted as unprofessional. BTW, I don't mean to overload you with TMI, but I almost forgot to TTY about acronyms, LOL. Annoying, right? Text lingo or acronyms may be suitable for a non-academic chat, but spelling the words out appears more professional. Professors will most likely prefer that you take the time to articulate your thoughts with complete spelling. Let's take a look at one more email. In this email, six netiquette rules have been broken. Five of these we've already discussed. Pause the video and see if you can identify all six netiquette rules broken. Can you name them all? This person used sarcasm, offensive language, unnecessary capital letters, unprofessional emoticons, and inappropriate text lingo. And number six? Notice the email address used. Avoid using personal email addresses for professional communications. Now consider how this email may have been interpreted by the professor. Hey, profs. Yesterday's finance lesson on debiting answers was great. Again, the intent may be harmless, but always proofread and be conscious of how your audience may interpret your messages.